So hi folks and welcome to the 23rd video in my Getting Started series for the game B-17 Flying Fortress The Mighty Eighth. In this video I'll be focusing on how to manually start up the B-17's engines. Now this video is broken down into two parts. In the first part I'll cover the engine startup procedure if you have the game's general difficulty setting set to low or medium. Now with these settings there is no risk of doing damage to the engines from mismanagement and this allows the startup procedure to be somewhat shorter and simpler. In the second part of the video, I'll cover the engine startup procedure if you have the game's general difficulty setting set to high. With this setting, damage to the engines from exceeding safe operating limits is modeled, and it is essential that the engines are closely monitored and carefully managed to prevent such damage. Now as such, additional steps in the startup procedure are necessary, as well as the addition of an engine warm-up period. Note that in practice, the pilot and co-pilot of real B-17s would go through detailed checklists prior to, during, and after startup. In fact, the procedures starting on page 85 of the English manual for this game, they are more or less the same as the original World War II USAAF B-17 manuals and checklists. However, many of the steps included in those procedures are in fact always preset correctly when starting a mission in the game, and therefore you really do not need to check them. As such, I have simplified the startup checklist and this video to mostly only those steps that you really need to do when starting the engines in this game. Now, I said mostly, as there are some additional steps that I have included, as it adds a little more realism to the game, and I'll point these out as we go. You obviously have the option to ignore those steps if you want to. Now, with regard to when to actually initiate the start mission command, I highly recommend that you do this before starting your engines. Issuing the start mission command instructs the other B-17s assigned to the mission to start their engines. Therefore, issuing the start mission command early ensures that all other B-17s in your squadron have adequate time to warm up their engines prior to takeoff, should you have the game's difficulty setting set to high. This is a critical step as I will discuss later. I also highly recommend that you issue the begin mission command via the keyboard by holding down the control key and tapping B. If you start the mission by clicking on begin mission in the radio operator's outgoing messages book, then the AI will immediately begin the engine startup procedure, which is obviously undesirable if you want to start the engines manually. So here we are at the normal starting screen when you begin a mission and um, what I'm going to do is just move the camera a bit first of all. I'm going to left click and drag my mouse so we can see the other B-17s that are joining us on this mission. And now I'm going to right click and just move my mouse forward to zoom in a little. So first thing I'm going to do is to turn the overlay in the top left of the screen off. Um, but that's because we really don't need it during the pre-start and startup checklists. Um, and it can obscure some aspects of the instrument panels that we'll be viewing in a short while. So I'm going to do that by holding down Control and tapping H on my keyboard. Uh, but I do recommend that you turn that overlay back on when you are ready to taxi and take off because the speed indication on the overlay is very useful during those phases. Uh, now you'll toggle it back on by again holding down Control and tapping H. So we'll now head inside the B-17 by pressing the F1 key at the top of the keyboard. And um, that takes us by default always at the beginning of a mission to the cockpit compartment view. Now we're going to select either the pilot or co-pilot and it makes no difference which one you select. Now there are a whole host of different ways of selecting crew members in the B-17 and I've covered those methods in a prior video in this Getting Started series. And I recommend if you've forgotten those methods that you go back to that Getting Started video and refresh your memory. And I'll put a link to that video in the top right of the screen right now. As for this moment in time, I'm going to left click on the pilot with my mouse button to highlight him and select him. And then I'm going to press I on my keyboard to go to the instrument view for the pilot. Now alternatively, I could move my mouse over to the right hand side of the screen to get the views menu and left click on the instrument view icon there. But I'm actually just going to use the keyboard. So I to go to the pilot's instrument overview. Now this is a great starting point for the mission and for manually starting the engines. Now before we actually issue the begin mission command, it is critical that we go into manual mode while we are in this cockpit instrument view. 
If we don't do that and we leave it in AI mode, and AI mode is indicated by the computer icon in the bottom right here, then when we issue the begin mission command, the AI will actually begin to start the engines up and run through those startup sequences. And we don't want to do that. We want to manually start these engines up. So the critical step, first of all, is to press the M key on the keyboard to go into manual mode. And that's now indicating manual mode by showing a hand icon down here in the bottom right. Now we can issue the begin mission command by pressing the control key and tapping B on the keyboard. Start engines. And you can see that B17 here has issued a radio command to start the engines and that has been issued to all of the B17s that we saw at the beginning that are going to be traveling with us on this mission. So they are now all having the AI run through their engine startup sequences. And so by the time we finish this here, all of the other B-17s will have all four of their engines running. Now at this point, I recommend that you completely finish manually starting up all four engines before moving away from the cockpit instrument views. If you do move to another view, including the pilot or co-pilot's action view, the startup and control of the engines will revert back to the AI and things have the potential to get really messed up if you haven't finished starting all of the engines manually prior to doing this. Now, as I mentioned before, with the game's general difficulty setting set to low or medium, there is no need to worry about damaging your engines through mismanagement. You know, for example, over revving the engines while they're still cold. Now, this allows us to use a simplified pre-start checklist and to avoid the need to concern ourselves with warming the engines after startup and prior to taxi and takeoff. So, as enough preamble, uh, we are ready. Let's run through the checklist and get these engines started. So the first step in our before starting checklist is the fuel shutoff switches and that's to make sure that they are set to off. Um, and they are actually preset in that condition. So the fuel cutoff switches are just here for engine one, two, three, and four. And with the switches pointing away from you, that is their off position. And because they're shut off switches in the off position, it's like a double negative. It actually means that the fuel supply is turned on. To the engine so you do not want um, those fuel shutoff switches to be on because it will actually isolate fuel to the engine and if the engine is running it will shut down immediately so there are switches to avoid when you are in flight that's for sure now the second step in the before starting uh, checklist is the throttles and that is to check that the throttles are closed and also to check that the turbos are off now the throttles should be in their fully forward position. That is as far towards you as possible. And as you see here, that is the closed position. And the turbos should be as far away from you as possible. Now, as I mentioned in the video prior to this one, this is an anomaly in the way this has been modeled in this game in that the turbos are actually modeled in reverse to how it was in reality. In reality, the turbo handles would all be towards you for them to be off. But in this game, Remember that these turbo control handles must all be away from you to be in their off position. Now, if for any reason the throttles and turbos are not in the correct positions, um, now if you're using an external controller, then simply just move that controller up a little and pull it back down again to zero. And you should hopefully see the animation of the throttles and turbos move to the appropriate positions, closed and off. or press the minus key at the top of the keyboard and keep it held down. And again, that has a similar effect of actually making sure that the throttles are reduced to zero. So just make sure that the throttles and turbo handles are in the positions that you can see now. Now the third step in the before starting checklist is to make sure that the fuel mixture is set to idle cutoff. Now, similarly to the fuel shutoff switches, these are actually preset in the correct conditions every time you start a mission. And the mixture control handles are just over here, and they all need to be set in the extreme position away from you, so as far away from you as possible. And as you can see there, they are already in the position that we want them to be in, so that's great. And the final step in the before starting checklist is to make sure that the prop pitch handles are set to the high RPM position. Now, the prop pitch control handles are down here. Now, similarly to the turbo control handles, these are actually modeled in reverse. And as I say, I have discussed that in the video prior to this one, so please check that one out. But these all need to be in the lowest position. Um, in reality, they would have been in the fully up position, 
when starting the engines, but in this game it's reversed, so they need to be all the way down. And that is the preset conditions. So again, it's something that you actually don't really need to check in this game when you're starting the engines. And this is the same at every mission that you do. So that's everything with regards to the before starting checklist. We can now actually move on to the starting engines checklist. And the first step there is to actually set the master or mainline switch to on. And we'll do that right now. And the mainline switch is just up here. It's this red, big red switch here. And we just simply left click on it once. And there you could see various gauges uh, kicking into gear and coming up to normal readings. And that's a good indication that you've now got electrical power to all of the B17 systems. Now the next step is to set the magnetos for each engine, as in all, to the both setting. And that's very simply done by going to the magneto switches that are here. That's magneto switch number one, two, three, and four. And you simply left click on each one once. So that's engine one, two, three, and four. So that's fantastic. That's the magnetos now turned on. Now, just before we actually do go ahead and start the engines, we do want to make sure that our parking brakes are applied. Again, this is preset in the game, but I do actually like to double check that the parking brake is indeed set, and I recommend that you do the same. Now, you can do this in obviously one of two ways. You can either press P on the keyboard, or we can go to the Copilot's view, and I'm going to do that by going by pressing the F5 key, and the parking brake is down here. Now, if you remember from um, one of my earlier Getting Started videos where I'm doing the tour of the B17, if we left click on the parking brake, it releases it. And if we left click on it once more, it actually sets it. So you don't really know whether it is on or off other than the position of this handle. Now, when it's pulled towards you like that, the parking brake is on and set. Uh, but when you look at this without actually seeing it animated, it can be a little bit tricky to tell. So I highly recommend just using the keyboard shortcut of P, which I just did there. Now the next step is to turn the fuel booster pumps on and to verify that they are indeed operating. And that's why we're going to stay in this Copilot's instrument overview screen, because we want to monitor the fuel pressure gauges, which are just here for engines one and two and engines three and four. And the fuel booster pump switches are over here. It's this bank of four switches here for engines one, two, three, and four. And we're just going to left click on each one of those and then monitor those two gauges. So here we go. That's one and two. And we can see the pressure of those two rising up. And then we're going to do three and four. So perfect. They come up to about a reading of 15. Now, the next step in the checklist is to turn on the carburetor air filters. And the carburetor air filters should always be on when you are starting the engines and when you are operating the old B-17 at any altitude below 8,000 feet. So the carburetor air filters are located over here, or indeed the controls of them are, I should say, and the indicators. And to see them more clearly, we're actually going to zoom into this area by again pressing the F6 key. And we have a bank of four green lights. And when they're green, that indicates that they are off. So there are four filters, obviously one for each engine. Now the switch that controls them is down here. And this switch is simply activated by just left clicking on it. But if I left click on it now, it doesn't do anything. And the reason that doesn't operate at the moment is because it is actually locked out. And that has become locked out because I've been using the left mouse button on a number of the engine controls. And that has locked out the carburetor air filters control here, which is a bit bizarre, but it, it happens in this game. Now, what you need to do is to right click on this switch first to unlock it. And now if we left click on it, it actually activates. And what we can now see is that the green lights have all gone off and these orange or amber lights have come on. And if I just hover over them, you can see it now says that the filters are on. So that's perfect. Okay, so the next step in the procedure is to preset the throttles to around 1000 RPM for all of the engines. And we're going to do that by going back out to the Copilot's instrument overview screen by pressing the F5 key. And we're going to come over to the throttles here and I'm going to use the left mouse button just to move these throttles up a small amount. And that's roughly the position for 1000 RPM. And in reality, that was, I believe, around three quarters to one inch. 
Now, we will do minor adjustments on these as necessary if once we've started the engines, we see that the RPMs are not at the 1000 target mark. Now, the next step in the procedure is on a per engine basis. So we're going to run through steps seven to 10 for engine one, and then we're going to repeat that for engines two, three, and then four. And the first step in that process is to set the fuel mixture for engine one to auto rich. Now, the, if you remember, the mixture control handles are here. The mixture control handle for engine one is this one here, and we're going to left click and drag it towards us. Now, it comes forward two notches. The first notch is auto lean. The second notch, <laughs> the second notch is auto rich. And if it's fully forward towards you, that's actually full rich or emergency rich. Now, so we need to go back one to get the auto rich setting that we're looking for. Now we're going to come over to the start and mesh switch panel, which is over here. Now this is broken down into quadrants in that engine one is down in the bottom left quadrant, engine two in the top left, engine three in the top right, and engine four in the bottom right. Now the left two switches are dedicated to engines one and two, and the right two switches are dedicated to engines three and four. So we're going to work on engine number one first, so we'll work off on these two left-hand switches. Now, because number one is in the lower quadrant, we need to move these switches down, and we do that by left-clicking on them. When we want to move them up for engine two, we right-click on them. So what the, we do to actually get the engine going is we left-click once on the start switch, we wait five seconds, and then we left-click on the mesh switch and hold it down for five seconds and the engine will hopefully kick into gear and get started. So let's do that right now. So I'm just going to click once and count to five. And then I'm going to left click and hold the mesh switch down. And there you go. You can hear the engine starting. You can see the gauges moving up. And this, this switch actually automatically moves back to its neutral position. And if we do press F6 to zoom into the gauges here, we can see that the throttle setting that I estimated was pretty spot on. We, we are just about a thousand RPM. So I'm just going to leave that as is. If it isn't around a thousand, then press F5 to come back to the overview and then left click on the th appropriate throttle handle, the throttle control here for engine number one in this case, and then drag it up or down as necessary. So that's it. That's engine number one started. So let's just we're just going to repeat that process of steps seven to ten for engines two, three, and four. So starting off, the fuel mixture control forward two notches to auto rich for engine number two. We're going to come over here and now we go to right click on the start switch for engine number two. Wait five seconds. And I'm going to right click and hold the mesh switch down for about five seconds until the engine fires up. And then check the engine RPM, and that's looking good too. So now we can move on to engine number three. So again, I'm going to left click on the mixture control handle, bring it forward two notches. And now engine number three is in the upper portion here, so we've got a right click on this start switch now. So one right click, wait five seconds, and then right click on the mesh switch there. There we go. Engine number three is starting up and we can see again that the tachometer is reading about a thousand RPM, so no adjustments necessary. Now engine number four, I'm going to left click on the mixture control handle for engine four, bring it forward two notches to auto rich. And now we need to push this start switch down. So I'm going to left click on it. So click on it once, wait five seconds, and then left click on the mesh switch and hold it down. Taxi to runway. There we go. Engine 4's RPM is coming up to around the thousand. Perfect. Once all four engines are started, the radio command is sent to the entire squadron and all B-17s that are flying on this mission to taxi to the runway. Do not worry. You do not need to rush they will leave a space for you to get through. None of the B-17s will take off. You are the lead B-17 in the game, 
um, and they will all wait for you. So and they will not take off until you have taken off. And there is always a path left for you to the end of the runway. So no rushing. Don't worry. So that's perfect. So that is uh, all four engines started up. Just before we finish up this section, if I try and move my throttle control on my joystick or use the keyboard controls, the throttles do not respond. And be that is because we've been using the left mouse button to set again some of these uh, engine controls and that has locked us out from throttle control. So what you need to do is to right click on either the turbo control handles here, the mixture control handles or the throttle control handles. And so what we're going to do is we're going to right click on each of these throttle handles one at a time, engine one, two, three, and four. And now I'm just going to move my throttle, external throttle up very slightly to get the RPMs back to around a thousand. There we go. And you know when you are not locked out from throttle control when you can either see these throttle control handles uh, vibrating like that or the turbo control handles are vibrating. If either one of those two is vibrating, you are not locked out from your joystick or keyboard throttle control. And that's it folks, that's the startup procedure for when you want to manually start up the engines when the game's difficulty setting is set to low or medium. Now we're going to move on to the more complicated procedure that you should follow if you have the game's general difficulty setting set to high. So here we are at the start of another mission and we're going to go through many of the same steps that we did before. So first thing, I'm going to turn off the overlay in the top left by holding down Control and tapping H. I'm going to press F1 to go inside and we're in the cockpit compartment view again. I'm going to select the pilot by left clicking on him and then pressing the I key to go to the pilot's instrument overview. Now as before, um, before we actually uh, issue the begin mission command is critical that we press the M key to go into manual mode. So there we go, we're in manual mode now. So I'm now going to issue the begin mission command by holding down control and tapping B. Now, as I said before, what well, this has sent the signal to all of the other B-17s to run through their engine startup procedures. And uh, that's what they're doing right now. And because this is going to take us a bit longer, they will definitely all have their engines running and be warming those engines up prior to us actually even being ready. And that's actually a really good thing because you want those engines to all be warmed up nicely before they start taxiing. And um, that's really very, very important. You don't want any damage occurring to those B-17s by them taking off when their engine and oil temperatures are too low. Okay, so the checklist I'm presenting on screen now includes um, some additional steps in the before starting procedure. Now, the first step is, is very different. It's actually we have to ensure that the intercoolers are set to cold. And we do that by pressing the F9 key on the keyboard. Now, you can, the intercooler controls are over here on the far right, and they are always preset down in the cold position. So they are in exactly the position we need them to be in. Next up, we go off to the fuel shutoff switches. So we'll go back to the pilot's um, overview by pressing F4. And again, as in the previous section, the fuel cutoff switches are already preset. So those first two steps are preset. And again, you can probably just ignore those steps when playing this game, uh, because whenever you start a mission, they are always in those default preset positions. Now, the third step in the before starting procedure is to open the cow flaps. And the cow flaps are set with these cow flaps, which is here for it. That was engine one, engine two, engine three, and engine four. And you can see it says 0% on all of those. Now we need to open those fully. So we're going to set them all to 100%. And you do that by left clicking and holding the mouse down until it's reached 100%. Then you can let go of the mouse. And we'll do that for each engine. Now they did this in reality because it prevented hot spots from forming in the engines, which could do damage to them. Now, clearly, I don't imagine for a moment that that is modeled in this game. So this step of setting the cow flaps to 100% could likely be one you could skip. And also, it does actually slow down warming up of the engine in the game. And that's actually probably not the best of things to be doing. But just to be um, a little bit more realistic, 
Um, and just to err on the safe side, because I'm not exactly certain of exactly what items have been modeled in this game, I do like to set the cow flaps to 100% as they were in reality for engine startup and taxiing. So the next step is, the, is this, again, the same as in the prior section of the video. We're now double checking that the throttles are closed and the turbos are off. And they are indeed the throttles all the way back in their closed position and the turbos are all the way forward in their off position there. Again, if they are not, then move your external throttle controller up and down to make sure that does happen or press the minus key on the keyboard. If you get no response from those, it's likely because you have a left clicked on these cow flap switches to turn them to 100%. So if you're you are finding that the throttles are actually open or the turbos are not off, then right click on each one of these throttles for each engine and then try again. Move your external controller forward and back or press the minus key on at the top of the keyboard and keep it held down until they do move to those closed and off positions. Okay, the next step is to check that the fuel mixture is set to idle cutoff and as before, these are all preset in their idle cutoff position. All of these fuel mixture control handles are fully back and away from you. So that's where we want them. And the final step in the pre-start or the before starting checklist is to just to double check that the prop pitch control handles are all the way down here, which in this game represents the high RPM position. So now we can actually run through the engine startup procedure and we're going to run through the first six steps which are common to all four engines. So the first step is to turn on the master or mainline switch and we'll do that by left clicking on it here. Again, we can see those gauges coming up to indicate electrical power is now on to the B17 systems. Step two is to turn on the magnetos to all four engines and the magnetos are here, engine one, two, three, and four. And we just left click on each one of those in turn. And then we just want to check that the parking brake is on and it is preset on by default, but I like to double check. And so I just press P on my keyboard just to ensure that the parking brake is indeed on. Now for the next step in the procedure, we're going to turn on the fuel booster pumps and these are turned on via these switches here for engine one, two, three, and four. Uh, but we're going to go to the co-pilot's instrument overview by pressing the F5 key. And that allows us to watch the fuel pressure gauges here. So we're just going to turn on those booster pump switches for one, two, three, and four. And we can see the fuel booster pump indications, the pressure indications for the fuel have all moved up to around the 15 mark. Next up, we need to turn on the carburetor air filters. And we're going to do that by zooming into this area by pressing the F6 key. And we do that by left clicking on this switch here. Notice when these lights are green, the filters are off. And when I left click on that switch, uh -huh, we are locked out once more. Because I have been left clicking on various things in this procedure, it locks this switch out. So I need to right click on this switch to remove that lockout. And now I can left click on it. And so now you can see that the green lights went off and the orange or amber lights have come on to indicate that the carburetor air filters are now turned on. And the final, final step for the common part of the engine startup sequence is to set the throttles to around 1000 RPM. So I'm going to press F5 to go to the co-pilot's instrument overview. And I'm just going to left click on each one of these throttles and just move them up a little bit each. As I mentioned before in the prior section of the video, in reality, that was, I believe, around three quarters to one inch. So now we're going to move on and actually start up each engine in sequence. So we're going to always start with engine one and we're going to work through in sequence from two, three, and then finally engine four. So the first thing for engine one is to set the fuel mixture to auto rich. And we do that by moving the mixture control handle forward two notches. The first notch is um, auto lean. The second notch is auto rich and the fully forward notch is full rich or emergency rich. So we are now in auto rich for engine one and we can actually start up the engine and we'll do that using the start and mesh switches over here. And for engine one, we need to left click on the switch to move it down to the engine one section 
down at the bottom left here. So one quick left click there, wait five seconds, and then left click on the mesh switch and just hold it until the engine fires. And then that switch reverts back to its neutral position. Now our engine RPMs are looking good. That's around a thousand. I'll just zoom in very quickly for you there. So that's around a thousand RPM. So that was F6 to come to this view and now F5 to go back to the overview. And we just repeat that process for each engine. Uh, so we'll do engine number two now. Forward two notches on the fuel mixture control handle. To set this switch to use to apply it to engine two, which is in the upper left quadrant here, we now right click once on the start switch, wait five seconds, and then right click and hold on the mesh switch. And just wait. There we go, engine number two has fired up perfectly. And again, the RPMs are looking good. So we'll now do that for engine three, and because Engine 3 is in the upper quadrant, we need to right click on the switch to move it up. So one right click on the start switch, wait 5 seconds. And then right click on the mesh switch and hold it down. Or hold it up I should say. There we go, engine 3, check its RPM. Perfect. And so now we'll do engine 4. Okay, engine 4 running. So two notches forward on the engine 4 fuel mixture control handle. We've got to move it down to the lower position for engine four. So we left click on the start switch just once, wait five seconds. And then left click on the mesh switch and hold it down. Taxi to runway. There we go, engine four's RPM is coming up to around a thousand, perfect. Now again, as you saw, uh, the same thing happened in this section of the video as in the prior section. Once all four engines are started, the radio command is sent to the entire squadron and all B-17s that are flying on this mission to taxi to the runway. Do not worry, you do not need to rush. They will leave a space for you to get through. None of the B-17s will take off. You are the lead B-17 in the game um, and they will all wait for you. So and they will not take off until you have taken off. And there is always a path left for you to the end of the runway so no rushing don't worry <laughs> okay so what we now have is some additional checklists to run through and this is because we should not start taxiing until our engines have warmed up we are at risk now of doing damage to the engines while they are cold and so what we are actually going to do is we're going to try and accelerate the warm-up process slightly by increasing the throttle on all four engines such that the RPMs come up to about 1200. You do not want to really go much higher than that. Now, the problem is if I move the throttle control on my joystick, I get no response. And this is the same again as in the prior section of the video. External throttle control has become locked out because we've been left clicking on a number of engine controls. So what we now need to do is revert that control back to you, back to the keyboard, back to your external throttle control by right clicking on a set of engine controls and I'm using the throttles there. You could easily have done that on the turbo control handles or on these mixture control handles here. And now the engine RPMs drop because I've got my throttle control on my joystick set to zero. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is press F6 first of all to zoom into the tachometer for the engines and I'm just going to gradually move up my throttle controller until I get about 1200 RPM. Now, the key thing that we're watching here is the oil temperature gauges, and they are located here. And so you've got one gauge for engine one, engine two, engine three, and engine four. And if you hover the mouse over, it's very tricky. If you get it in just the right position, it will actually tell you the numeric value for that. And it said there that the, currently the oil temperature is 48 degrees. Engine one's been running the longest, so it's hottest. Oil temperature of engine 2 is 45, engine 3 is 43, and engine 4 is 39. And you can see that it is increasing. Now they, all, they are all shown in blue, those pop-up texts. Blue indicates that the temperature is too low. And you should definitely not be taking off with the temperature that low because you will do damage to the engines. So what we actually wanted to wait for was just to make sure 
before taxiing that the temperature was above 40. That's okay to taxi when the temperature is 40 or above, even though these are still showing blue, because you will be keeping your engine RPMs very low while taxiing. Now, if you're going to take off, that's a different story, and we'll come on to that in a short moment. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to taxi to the end of the runway, which I'll skip um, forward in this video on, and so I'll see you back here in a moment once I've got to the end of the runway and we're ready for takeoff. Well, that's us at the end of the runway, folks. And <laughs> there we go. We're cleared for takeoff. But we're not going to take off just yet. We, obviously, we need to go inside and check whether the engines have warmed up sufficiently. So I'm going to press F1 and M to go straight back into manual control. Otherwise, the AI, as you saw there, wants to take immediately con immediate control and suddenly try and take off. So we're not going to let it. So make sure if you do go back to the interior view as we did just there that you press M immediately afterwards. So what we want to check uh, the engine temperatures and we we'll do that by going to F6 and we want to make sure that the oil temperature is up around 60 degrees. 60 degrees is the minimum that the oil temperature must be before you take off. So we're 61 on engine 1, 60 on engine 2, a little bit cold on engine three. So I'm actually gonna bring the throttle up a little bit more. Just get our revs back up to 1200. So that temperature is coming up. It's not gone out of the blue region yet, despite it showing 60. So we're not gonna go just yet. Oh, and engine four is only showing 59. So we are going to wait. Now, I'm just bringing my throttle up slightly more to try and accelerate that. So we'll check engine 4 again, that's not up yet. And engine 3, engine 3 I think just went orange there. There we go, engine 3 is warm enough, engine 2 is warm enough, engine 1 is warm enough. And engine 4 is still obviously creeping up. It's changed to 60 but we've not got the orange text showing yet. What I often do in this situation is actually accelerate time. So let's do that. So I'm just pressing the home key a couple of times there. And we'll hover over this gauge. There we go, it's gone orange now. So I'm just pressing the end key a couple of times to slow time down again. There we go. 60 orange, 61, 61, and 61. So perfect, we are ready for takeoff. So that's essentially the warm-up process complete. You don't have to worry about the cylinder head temperature or the carburetor air temperature gauge. You don't have to worry about those for takeoff. High RPMs will not do damage to the engines based on these temperature readings. It's the oil temperature which is the key one. Now don't forget, if you are going to take off now, I would normally do that via the exterior view. And so if you are going to do that, make sure that you press the manual key very quickly afterwards. So we're going to do that right now. I'm going to press F2 and then M to go into manual mode. And then run through the takeoff procedures as I have presented in an earlier video in this Getting Started series. And again, I'll put a, <laughs> again, I'll put a link to that in the upper right hand corner of the screen right now. And as you can see, actually, all of the other B-17s have caught up with us. See, they are all queuing up behind us for takeoff. So what I told you before about not rushing to get to the end of the runway is perfectly valid. They will all wait for you. So there we go, folks. I think that's all I really wanted to cover in this video. I hope this has, been, um, has met your expectations. If you do have any comments or questions, please let me know in the comments section below. If you did like this video, if you found it useful, please give it a thumbs up. Um, that really does help me out. And uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you very much for watching. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Lots more videos like this coming up. Anyway, take care, folks. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.